Hello, uh, this is your girl, Dr. Khadija, Dr. Mbeneka Kenya. Uh, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to discuss a very interesting topic and again I'm going to put in some personal experience. So today I'm going to speak on how if breastfeeding is a family planning method and how it backfired on me. Yes, but I'm going to give you my story later on in the video. So is breastfeeding a family planning method? Yes, it is a family planning method. With an 82 to 90 percent uh, efficiency uh, efficiency rate, but it has there's some catch to it. You have to do exclusive breastfeeding, so that means you're not giving your baby water, no formula, no milk from outside. It's only exclusive breastfeeding. Number two, you should be not having any, you should be what you call a menorah in uh, medical jargon, so no menses. So after you are bleeding post delivery, the postpartum bleed, then after you should not be having any menses. You should be completely no menses, so that's what you call a menorah. So that's number two. And number three, you should be your feeds should be frequent. You know, at least at least worst case scenario, at least five to six feeds in a day. But some of us we are doing more. We do more, of course. It's because babies breastfeed almost every two to three hours. Some babies four hours, you know. And in the t so in this at least five to six feeds, at least in total, the breastfeeding latching uh, period should last t in total at least sixty minutes if you count the whole day, you know. So yes, I fulfilled these criteria, but it failed on me. I'm going to discuss about it. And so how does uh, how does family planning how does breastfeeding act as a family planning method? So breastfeeding, and actually the more you breastfeed, the more a hormone called prolactin is produced in the brain. And this hormone, uh, it interferes with the hormones, the production of hormones that uh, promote ovulation. So it suppresses the production of some hormones in the brain called gonadotropic releasing hormones that, uh, that stimulate ovulation and also interferes with hormones at the ovary level that promote or cause ovulation. So here's my story. How did it backfire on me? So I was doing exclusive breastfeeding and I'm very, very stubborn. Those who know me, if I decide to do something, I do it, no matter what. So I remember fighting very much with my parents and with my mother-in-law. Because, you know, they were like, what is this exclusive thing? Like, is the baby even getting full? You're not resting at all. You have lost so much weight. And I was like, it doesn't matter. WHO has said you do exclusive. I'm doing exclusive. And that's what I did. Exclusive, exclusive breastfeeding. No water. My baby never tasted water. Nothing. No milk from outside. Nothing, nothing. Just my milk. And I was latching because I was on leaves. My tongue to leave anyway. And I was at finished school. So I had the time. So I was doing exclusive. And I was not even expressing. I was doing exclusive like every two to three hours i'll be awake like i was literally on autopilot mode i was a zombie but i was like it's worth it because i was doing it number one because of for, for my baby I wanted my baby to get maximum good nutrition from me from the breast milk and number two i wanted my baby to get uh, maximum immunity and number three i wanted to bond as much as possible with my baby so i stopped everything else and concentrated on being a mother and breastfeeding and taking care of my child. I was like, I'm going to, I was going to be uh, tiring, but totally worth it. And I was doing it also for myself because remember I said uh, breastfeeding interferes with some hormones also at the ovarian level. So it interferes also with the production of estrogen at the ovaries. So remember I told you before in my other video that I have fibroids. So I, I was like in these six months, I can as well do exclusive and uh, prevent this production of estrogen. Okay, lower down the production of estrogen because of all this hormonal interaction. I'm not going to bore you with all that. And you know, the food for fibroids is what? Estrogen. So I was like, uh, the lesser the estrogen in my body and also progesterone to some level to some extent, uh, the slower the growth of my fibroids or it will stop the growth of my fibroids at least for those six months. So that's how I was doing it for myself and for my baby. And again, also, I was also, you know, with breastfeeding, you don't have to boil, you don't have to, you know, no hygiene measures or you rely on other people for anything. So it's just, as long as your hands are clean, there's no warming and whatnot. As long as your hands are clean and your breast is clean, your nipple is clean, breastfeeding, there's no warming, no 
uh, or boiling or doing that. So I was like, also it was easier to maintain hygiene for the baby's feeding. And then uh, I think the third month of uh, of my uh, delivery, third month of my baby's life, I noticed that actually I had all the signs of ovulation. Because number one, I noticed that I was a bit anxious, which which before uh, used to happen to me around mid-cycle. I think during the LH surge, LH is luteinizing hormone, a hormone that is produced uh, that surges, then causes the production of the egg or the ovulation. So I don't know, it happens to me. I don't think it's, uh, it's, it happens to everybody else. But mid-cycle, like a day before ovulation, I normally have a bit, a bit, a bit. Like I, I can tell that, okay, maybe I have some anxiety, but I can control it. Uh, number two, I noticed that uh, I had the characteristic vaginal discharge for ovulation. It's usually transparent. If you know it, you'll never forget it. Transparent, uh, very transparent, thin, Vaginal discharge, very characteristic. I had it, and like a day after that, I had uh, I had the Bittelschmann's pain. It's a pain that you feel when the egg is being produced. And I remember telling my person that I I have I have ovulated, and and he actually opposed me. He was like, no, you can't ovulate, <laughs> and uh, you are doing total exclusive breastfeeding. Yes, and also I had no menses, so so I would fulfill the criteria, but I was like, no, I am a gynecologist and I know my body. So I told him, I know I've ovulated. And so I, I was like, okay, so we, we brushed it aside, but of course I took my own precautions. And uh, two weeks later, I got my menses. So meaning that actually that day I ovulated. And of course, because you ovulate and uh, you know, did a video on this also. So two weeks after ovulation, if there's no uh, fertilization, then you bleed, you get your menses. So it means I actually ovulated. And of course, yes. And it became now regular, back to menses, kawaida. So I was actually ovulated, despite fulfilling all the requirements for breastfeeding as a family planning method. And I know it happened to one celebrity in the country that they got pregnant so fast and they said, I thought because I was doing exclusive that it was a family planning method. And I also have four friends, four friends who reported back to work after maternity leave and they found out in the first month of work that they were actually pregnant again. So yes, yeah, so it's good. I know my body and I have the knowledge so I knew that it was not working for me. I was in the 18% of the population for whom it doesn't work. So yes, I hope you have learned something in this video. Please subscribe, please share my video. I'm going to be very, very serious with my uh, YouTube channel this year. And uh, thank you for the support. Please subscribe and share. And if you are breastfeeding, even though you're doing it exclusive, please take precautions, listen to your body. And if you can access the family planning method, please do access. Thank you very much. And yes, let's promote also exclusive breastfeeding. It's good for the baby. It's good for the mother. If you can do it, if you can manage. Thank you very much.